Recording is on. Thanks everybody for joining Jenkins Docs Office Hours. Let's see, I need to find our notes. I've assembled them and here they are. Okay. So Jonathan, since you're here, any questions that you have that you'd like to start us with? Mm, what I, I didn't see our AJ then so today. Today it was just Q and A, just question and answer. Okay. No, I have just a. a uh, I need some clarification for you. I, I would like to have your opinion about the PR that I create some days ago. And uh, if possible, I would like to have more information about the community bridge too. Uh, I, I read all the, those links uh, that you provide to us, but uh, there is no valuable information to, to members to proposal, to send their proposal. I, maybe I, think I didn't find it. No, 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 you're, you're, you are correct. We are not. We are not ready yet. I don't think we're ready yet anyway with a process that proposes how people would send a proposal for a community bridge project. So, so yeah, you're... I, I don't understand the, the workflow process to work on. Right. Well, so let's, let's put that, let's put that as a topic and we'll, we can discuss it. And so community bridge. Uh, proposals and topics, right? And workflow. Okay, good. So I'm actually going to go ahead and share my screen, and we'll just look at my screen as a uh, as our source for the notes, and we can talk to it there. That's it's certainly no 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 worse looking than I am and is a lot more organized looking than I am. So there we go. Community bridge. We could argue that, but. Yes, yes, that, that, that's, that'll be enough. That's great. All right, so community bridge is, we, we don't have a, uh, a project proposal workflow uh, defined yet. Um, in the past, in the past community bridge project, uh, we reused the Google Season of Code uh, proposal workflow. Now it was a code; it was a code project, and therefore it fit to use Google Season of Code. I would assume we'll reuse the Google Season of Docs. Ah process for community bridge. So right now that would mean um, we would draft proposals. They would go to probably the Jenkins governing board for, for review or to the mentor team from Google season of docs. And then uh, a project would be selected. That person would be funded and off we would go. Now, is that what you were asking, Jonathan, or is there some other question? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, just for a clarification, I asked for because uh, I, I have some doubts about. But uh, what do you need to? We need to prepare something. There is some uh, timestamp to work on, uh, like a a. a a stone marks like a, a, time, a timeline or nothing? Not yet. Not yet. So just uh, let's uh, wait for. Correct. Right. The the okay. first the most crucial thing here is is funding. Oops, funding and approval to do a community bridge project. Uh, we'll have to come from the uh, comes from the governing board from the Jenkins board, 
and that that hasn't been granted yet and so that's that's the most crucial thing uh, before that until that happens and right now our total dollars sitting in community bridge to use for this is not enough to fund it and so so we would we may have to request more funds or we may have to request donations or et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so we we can uh, uh, waiting for a signal from Jenks organization. To yes, proposals. correct, right. So wait, wait okay, for an announcement, and it and for. it will be it will be made very publicly, right? Uh, so, of a community bridge project. So, the the last one we did we did with a blog post. Uh, we did with a, a mailing list announcement. Uh, I don't. I don't think that we would do a, a webinar for this one, but we might even do a webinar. That's that's a possible for sure. In the past, we've used blog posts and mailing list announcements. Okay. Uh, I would expect we would, in the, given that now we're using the Gitter channel, we would likely also announce it in the Gitter channel. Mark, uh, I wanted to uh, to comment on this. In case if uh, participants of this uh, uh, special interest group or like any Jenkins project participant participants can facilitate funding, please let us know how can we help. Oh, great! Uh, okay. Yeah. So that's a that's a very good question. Let me show one example. Uh, this is one you might mention to to others with whom you work or to employers. So if we look at the Jenkins Community Bridge page, it is accepting donations. And let's see, where is it? So you could pass, for instance, to an employer that you say, hey, we would like you to contribute to Jenkins Community Bridge. And now I may have to go find the correct location just a minute while I go looking. It is not there, but there. Okay, so there is a donate button somewhere in these things. Donate, where is donate? Maybe I should just do it like this. I know there is on GitHub on different. Uh, oh levels. yes, yes, that's a very good suggestion. I should just go there because, of course, it also exists there. I think I can find it here. Contributing down, maybe. No. Okay. So, because I know that. The donate page has been added. Nope, that's not it. Okay, so it may be that it's still in progress. So let's use Vlad's suggestion and go to GitHub and GitHub. And I think if we look at core, I believe it's been enabled on core, hasn't it? Yeah. No, nope, I don't oh, see sir. sponsor. sponsor. Oh, that the, one. The pink okay. shirt. Yeah. There we go. Thank you. Excellent. Okay, so this page uh, shows us that we could, and so individuals and organizations can contribute. The uh, I believe this three thousand dollar expense that you see here was what we used last year to fund uh, the J Jenkins Community Pro Bridge project that we ran last year. So we would be delighted to have more contributions and a big green donate button. Thank you. Thanks for guiding me through that. Sorry for my lack of skill, but yes, that's, that's, that's the way to get there.
Any other questions on uh, Community Bridge? Okay, hey, we had another topic here, which was Google Season of Doc proposal details, Docker solutions and tutorials. Vlad, was this one you had asked or is there somebody else who had asked that one? Uh, I actually added this uh, and this is a follow up to uh, our submission of proposals, which uh, I guess happened last week. Uh, and I would like to address my, uh, well, my proposals. I just wanted to keep them somewhere. Uh, I posted today a question on Docker uh, um, discussion group and got response from Alex uh, that nothing is developed regarding to my proposal. Uh, and it was basic proposal was about creating something very simple, which will allow to generate set of Docker images with Jenkins inside. Uh, something similar to uh, uh, Marvin archetype, for instance. Archetype generate, you can uh, create different archetypes up to 15 different solutions uh, predefined. Uh, and we can, well, just an idea, do something very similar to this. Uh, the main goal from my point of view is simplicity of this kind of tool or plugin. I have no experience developing Jenkins plugins. Uh, so users can very easily uh, build and instantiate run Docker image, which will do something very specific and the specifics will be defined by Jenkins project or uh, uh, by, by Jenkins basically or community bridge and the user and user will need to choose between solutions which are more appropriate to his goals or her goals. Uh, and uh, again, there is like wide range of uh, different possible solutions. And I would start in case if I will be allowed to implement this uh, from simple one and go up, like increment comple complexity, not vice versa. Uh, so kind of bottom to up approach versus top down. Um, uh, so, yeah. I will not start with Kubernetes, but go eventually to Kubernetes. <laughs> and, and I think the idea is interesting. The, the, we, we have tutorials currently um, that for instance, run, run an agent. So run a Jenkins plus an agent to build a Maven uh, project. And we have a Jenkins plus an agent to build a uh, node, Node.js project. Mm -hmm. And Jenkins plus agent to build, let's see, what's the other, oh, Python project. Mm -hmm. And so, so you've got some good working base to, to think about it. Mm -hmm. Now to go, were you considering, I, I'm assuming you were not considering other components in, in this Docker image. So for example, not considering placing a source control system inside this image. Um, placing source control image inside this. Um, probably not. Uh, well, it depends how we run this, uh, I guess. 
So if there is like volume will be mapped to the source, then during instantiation phase, it will be, uh, this image will have access to the sources. But yeah, you are, I, I, just my main goal is to uh, attract new users. So they will become adopters of Jenkins. So we can increase their uh, user base. I know it is like uh, already significant enough, but, but still like, uh, and the reason for this is uh, for the simplicity. I believe this is how main uh, technologies got very popular, like how internet appeared. Basically HTTP, HTML is very simple kind of approach solution versus previous attempts uh, uh, or like REST, RESTful approach is better than, simpler than SOAP. That is why it was adopted by industry, this kind of idea. So simplicity is the key for adoption. Uh, uh, because like Jenkins is already complex enough. Uh, so uh, we already have good base of professionals, uh, uh, like uh, programmers, computer scientists, and so on working on this, but uh, something like to popularize it and uh, make sure that like my, let's say virtual grandmother or virtual granddaughter will be able, six year old virtual, I mean, <laughs> there's no such person, but they will be able to run it by simple command and create Jenkins apps. Uh, now, regarding these tutorials that you mentioned in the previous paragraph, I guess they exist, but they're using, uh, um, how to phrase it, not official Jenkins image. They're using Blue Ocean, uh, Jenkins CI Blue Ocean, which is, uh, my understanding, is deprecated, kind of not supported any longer. So. That's, it's, it's not only it has very specific problems that we would like to get away from it. Absolutely, yes. So those tutorials are are flawed in the sense that they're using an image that then, if users if users say, oh, I'll base my work on that tutorial, we think they've made a mistake, right? Rather than basing themselves on the Blue Ocean image, they should base themselves on the production Jenkins image. But that's that's disconcerting for them. But I just did the tutorial on Blue Ocean, on the Blue Ocean image, and the answer is yes, that's true. You have to make that disconcerting transition. Mm -hmm. So if those tutorials could be switched to to not use Blue Ocean, that mm -hmm. would be a a win for the the users, for the students, for those who are studying. May uh, uh, Mark, I comment also uh, instead of saying not using Blue Ocean. I uh, think Blue Ocean is very interesting, attractive plugin. Uh, not using Blue Ocean image, not but Blue Ocean uh, plugin may be still included through plugins, text or whatever inside plugins. Yes, and you make an excellent clarification. Absolutely, wholehearted agreement that we don't want to. We want to, in fact, encourage them to use the Blue Ocean plugin to visualize pipelines. It's an elegant way to do it, to do pipeline editing and visualization. It's very, very mm -hmm. powerful. But using the Blue Ocean Docker image is an, an anti-pattern. It's a negative because of the problems that are, in, that are built into the Blue Ocean Docker image. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good, good clarification. Yeah, right, right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Now, Vlad, I think you saw my note on the custom war packager. Right. As Thank a, you. that one is a relatively exotic thing. I hesitate to, I would not envision us being able to tell a new user of Jenkins, oh, just use custom war packager to define your own completely custom Jenkins instance. That's, that's to me just too complicated for them. 
it's, it, it is certainly an excellent technique for experts. Oleg makes very good use of it and others make very, very good use of it. But um, the custom build service, Jenkins, custom Jenkins distribution build service is working towards what could be an end user um, acceptable, an end user usable, uh, mm -hmm. ready to, to go. You define the configuration you want or pick from a menu and conceivably we could have have something that says oh you want to run this tutorial fine go to the custom build this jenkins distribution build service and choose this distribution mm -hmm. and then they would get the this custom probably docker image that's built for them or custom something built for them that would meet their need mm -hmm. I know that this this uh, uh, project is part of uh, Google season of code, I guess season or sum of code, I guess uh, properly. Uh, although my understanding was that this specific project was uh, targeting UI, so users through UI will uh, select what they want to build uh, by clicking proper plugins or whatever. Uh, uh, and I was thinking about uh, doing something from CLI kind of tool, which you can just uh, uh, like put some option, uh, for instance, whatever name of this tool or whatever, generate or create or run and put option like number, for instance, and this number will be mapped to one of our solutions, which we predefine based on uh, uh, something to decide, based on statistics, the most popular solutions, the most widely used, less issues, well, whatever would be the most appropriate rule to define this kind of solution. Uh, but, but you are right, I need to like look more closely into this uh, um, uh, project. Oh, like and I, definitely, there is some kind of uh, overlapping or intersection with what I intention. Uh, and again, I'm putting this for discussions, suggestions, and so like kind of follow up and providing more details to ideas which I submitted. Uh, Great. Any other questions or topics you'd like to, we'd like to bring to the discussion? Well, can we speak in about the DPRs that I said at the beginning? Sure, absolutely. Or, okay. Let's do that. So let's, and which were the PRs, Jonathan? Yeah, I sent it in, uh, through the chat, the chat. Perfect. Great. Right. Let me it's grab it there and let's take a look at it. So, thirty-four eighty-one. Yeah. Okay. No. Okay. So, uh, some days ago, Oleg uh, rec recommended not to use raw HTML, uh, HTML, uh, and write documentations, but. Uh, in that P, in this PR and the, that one other, I I use the already imported Bootstrap to create this effect of toggle visualization. Are you seeing on the GIF when you hit the button that show you the help or not? You choose see or not in the image. So ask doc don't don't offer to us uh, a feature to do this. Uh, so you, you will prefer to keep this button with raw HTML or you recommend to remove it too? Uh, so I would tend to advise removing it, but let's, let me look at something different. Let me show you a different one because there is a thing that does, we've got something already that does a hide and unhide uh, mm -hmm. in a different context that we might be able to use or might be able to use to justify the technique you're showing us. 
So let me see if I can find it here. It is in the plugin, the, the pipeline documentation. If we look at pipeline syntax, I believe it is, there is a section which will show us, uh, no, this is purely declarative. I may need, okay, pipeline syntax reference. Huh. Okay, there's declarative. Meg, maybe you know where it is. I, there is definitely a segment where I can see, let's see, using Docker, maybe this is, okay, let's see. Ah, yes, there it is, good, okay. So, uh, let's see, first question, can everyone see my screen okay? Yes. Okay. All right, so here is, here is a segment of the document that describes using Docker with pipeline. And we give the preferred solution first in declarative pipeline. Declarative has the benefit that it, it is immediately parsed in its entirety. So if there's a syntax error late in the, in the, the pipeline, it's detected immediately. Scripted doesn't do that. Uh, but some people have found that, hey, they have to have scripted. And so we have this here, which says toggle scripted pipeline. And oh. it presents this other thing. Now, I, I haven't looked in detail, Jonathan, to see how it does this, but I'm pretty sure it does it without, without doing too much uh, JavaScript, without doing, I suspect, any JavaScript magic, because the people who worked on this particular thing, I don't think were JavaScript programmers. Yeah. Yeah, but, it's, it's quite complicated, sorry, that solution, but I will replace it. I wish to do that one and, and replace it. Well, at, at least compare it. I'm not sure. I'm not, I'm not. I'm not confident yet to say, "Ooh, you should replace it." But if you compare what this technique is, for me, this technique is helpful because it, in this case, does I think what you were trying to do, which is initially the user benefits more by seeing the list of steps without seeing yeah. details for each step. Right? There's. I need to know that there are five things to do. And if I put the pictures in there all the time, I, I lose track of the fact that there are five things to do because the pictures obscure that. Whereas if I could toggle to see the picture expand, yeah, uh, it, ah, much more understandable. Yeah. It's the same idea that uh, uh, Vlad uh, tells to us. It's to keep it simple. It's not so uh, not noise visualization with it. If you in the first contact, you have a lot of information, you get lost uh, while you, you read in the studio. So I will study this link that you show to us, and uh, if you work well, I will replace it. Great. Well, and, and I'm going to put that into the notes just in case. So that Thank gives you. a place to, all right, so, so let's take a look at that. Let me make it so. Uh, pull requests discussion. So it was PR 3481, which had the expand and contract or hide and unhide images. Consider this. Yeah. And I, I wrote the this PR and I opened the issue to to create a, a plugin to S doc. So if you come back to Git visualization, there there is the link to create a new plugin. Ah, okay. Uh, so that was the description at the description. Yeah, the the first ah, bullet. Got it. Yeah, yeah, the second bullet. Okay. So uh in fact, I I wrote uh, the code, but I'm not, I'm not a Ruby expert. Uh, do you know something in our group that uh, have has the expertise to write plugins to to I help me that, in some questions? Well, I know that Daniel Beck has done it. I know that I will be using 
um, some Ruby code to do a, a, a thing that I need to do for the Jenkins infrastructure page. So I'm going to be getting into it, but if you're asking somebody who has Ruby skills, that is definitely not me. I, I am willing to experiment and learn, uh, but I've, I certainly know people who have written code in the, in the Ruby here, like Daniel Beck. Uh, Oleg has as well. Uh, Zubinek Konechny has, based in, I believe he's in... in okay, Slovenia? I, I sent a message to Oleg, so maybe uh, he's answering me uh, the next day. And uh, I, I come back and ask help to you too, so if okay. I can't resolve, hello. Great. Okay. All right, so that was the first, is the is the second the same? The second, it's the same. It's just for over samples. It's uh, just are two different pages. One about the parameter builder, and the second one it's uh, about the agent architecture. Excellent. Now, would you be willing to share a tutorial with us? I am truly impressed by the scrolling image that is here. How did you create that? I want to be able to do that same technique. <laughs> Yeah, it's a uh, help to the review, uh, review to see, review the, the chain. I can make a tutorial and I send to you to share okay. with everyone. Oh, that would be great. Uh, if, if you want to just record something, that's great. If you want to just tell me, that's fine. I, I've just, I've seen people use this kind of technique where they'd use what I thought were must have been animated GIFs. And it's, yeah, it's, it's marvelous. Simple. Okay. Yeah, you, you just need a, a program to record your screen. So you export the GIF, import in the website that support GIF. And uh, so you can put a, a HTML tag, image tag. It, it, it's on this. Okay, great. Thank I you. I will send you which page, each step. Oh, that would be wonderful. Thanks very much. Jonathan, I had done this sometime in the past, but I already forgot. If it is possible, I would like also to get your yeah. okay. link, I understand. link to the tools <laughs> that you are using. Okay. I'm sure I'm misspelling your name, Jonathan. It's correct. Oh, very good. Great. Yeah, I've I've fallen in love with my um, full page screens capture plugin that I use with um, with. Google Chrome, but it's a different thing than, than scrolling GIFs. It just gives me a static image, whereas you've got a way to show images that look like a movie. So. <laughs> yeah. Some documentation as website uh, use a lot of GIFs to show complex steps for their users. Nice. It's quite All beautiful. Right. Uh, I use GIFs to my uh, PowerPoint presentations too. So while I, I'm talking with the, the people, uh, the GIF is running and background, it's easier to show samples while presentation. Nice, thank you. Any other questions? Yeah. The, uh, I received a, a email from Google Season of Docs just uh, asking for to confirm with the, our organization if they receive our proposals correctly. Uh, it's uh, you receive the everything. It's uh, okay. As far as as far as I can tell from Oleg's reports, that's a good question. Has the organization received the proposals? Yeah, and, they just ask for confirmation. And the answer, as far as I can tell, is Oleg reported to the mentors 
that we have received it, received them. Okay. Now we did have a. He's he is Oleg is currently assembling the uh, links to all the mail messages. We did have a surprise. Um, we were surprised when Google Season of Docs sent the uh, proposals to the um, Jenkins Docs mailing list. That was not where we expected them to be sent. We spe expected them to be sent to the organization administrators, but we saw them, Oleg detected them, and has, has been able to get what he needed out of them. So we think we have all the right information. So, and the reason that was a surprise is the, uh, the list did not accept those postings. And that was really a good thing. Oleg was really worried because we didn't really want everybody's proposals sent by email. That was, we assumed we would review through the website and be able to give feedback and ranking there. Was that clear enough? Yeah, yeah, clear enough. Thank you. Any other questions? Not for me. All right. Um, well, oh, go ahead, Vlad. Well, just general question I uh, wanted to ask, uh, somehow related to what we discussed today about using, for instance, plugin, plugins.txt file in configuration as code while we're building, for instance, our own configuration of Jenkins. Uh, oh, again, what, uh, if somebody knows what would be the best approach or best practice for configuring this uh, set of plugins, I mean the name of plugins and versions. Uh, mm, uh, is there uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, standard approach for doing this? Or maybe there is some tool to generate this plugins.txt file? Uh, or we need to uh, uh, base from the previous uh, configuration of running Jenkins application, export this file, something like this. What is the best approach for doing this? Because general idea is very attractive, very interesting to include this and this Docker image will be configured with all these plugins, but how we generate uh, how we create this this text file, which is very simple, kind of in format, uh, name value pairs, but but <laughs> about the contents, how what is the best like, way of doing this? Right, right, very good. So so there is a uh, there there are several ways to generate that. So several different ways, right, to generate it to assemble plugins from a list. Uh, there's plugins.txt, mm -hmm. but that requires that you must, must enumerate, and, and this is in the Docker image, right? In Docker, whoops. Docker image definition. You must list every plugin. So it does no dependency analysis. It just, just a minute, must list every plugin. 
Mark, are you sharing correct screen? Oh, I don't know. Let's see. What do you, am I sharing a screen? I think so. Do you see my typing? Good question. Yeah, I'm seeing your typing. I okay. Don't. Oh, oh dear. Okay. So let me stop the share and I'll restart it just to be sure. Okay, so you should see a uh, Jenkins Docs office hours screen. Oh. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, and ultimately, so ultimately this one, you must list every plugin, including all dependencies. Mm -hmm. And there is another way to generate that same file using the plugin installation manager manager tool. This is a, a tool that was created as part of last year's Google Summer of Code. Mm -hmm. And what it does is you give it a, a list of relatively few plugins. And it will grab that those plugins and all of their dependencies. Uh, but this one is not yet integrated into the Jenkins Docker image. It's certainly on the list. We want it done there, but it just hasn't been done yet. It is integrated right now inside Oleg's demo configuration as code. Correct. Uh, demo. Yeah, so so one of the, the install-plugins.sh is reads plugins.txt and downloads files, mm -hmm. All right? And it is integrated <coughs> through the Docker image. Mm -hmm. So now how to generate that list, I think was your original question, Vlad, how to create a plugins.txt file. Mm -hmm. And the technique I've used, this is a terrible thing to admit, but the technique I've used is I go to my Jenkins installation. So let's go there. And in my Jenkins installation, I go to the system info page. So that's manage Jenkins system information. And then if we scroll down, after environment variables, there's this big table of plugins. I copy and paste from this thing and do a little bit of editing magic to turn it into exactly the things that plugins.txt needs. So this system info page is all that I used. Now that is that is a flawed and terribly imperfect way to do things, but it worked for it, it met the need that I had at the time. So basically, you derive from uh, running image something that you know it's good enough, right? To co to copy and paste, right? And that that has the benefit that I absolutely know I've satisfied all dependencies because. Jenkins did the dependency resolution itself. Yeah. Now I've used another technique, um, but this one is not, not viewed highly favorably by others. So I wouldn't claim that anyone else should do it. I have a Git repository that has large file support enabled, and I just check the plugins into that Git large that Git LFS repository. But that requires that you pay GitHub extra money each month in order to be allowed to use LFS. It's just so so convenient for me that it was it was easily worth the the few dollars a month that GitHub charges to use large files. 
I am not going to put that in the notes because it's one that I don't think anybody else should, should emulate. It just happens to work well for me. So Vlad, did that address your, your question there? Uh, yes. Now, I, there, there are probably better ways to do it than either of those. Uh, it seems likely. I just don't know what they are. And so then it'd be best to ask in the Gitter channels. Okay. Any other questions? I wanted to ask one more question and this is related to the issues um general approach uh in jenkins project is my this is my understanding that uh, some of the issues are tracked by github we have github issues for some components and some components uh the issues are tracked by jira and uh i was trying to find out uh, if you have specific component, how to determine the application which tracks these issues? Uh, is it GitHub or Jira? And I found solution, like if you go to uh, GitHub, uh, uh, the project name and component, let's say Jenkins, CI Jenkins, uh, slash issues, it will redirect to pools. Uh, so there will be no issues on GitHub, uh, only pull requests. It means uh, all issues are tracked by Jira. Or maybe there is some other solution, so, or approach. Uh, I just was wondering. Uh, no, the, you, how... you described it well. So you're, the, the heuristic is, Assume JIRA is the place where the issues are tracked as your first choice. Um, if there's a question, is JIRA actually being used, check the, the source code repository. And if the issues, issues uh, tab is enabled, then it's tracking issues in, in GitHub. Mm -hmm. So the example, let's see, let's, let's take two different examples. There's the first, which is the Jenkins Git plugin. So plugin I maintain, you'll look here and it does, oops, it does not have, why did it do that? Where am I getting used to my new mouse? So across the top here, code, pull requests, actions, projects, but no issues tab. If we take a different different um, repository. Let's take the Jenkins.io repository, for instance, instead. So the one that we use for the website. This one, notice that it has an issues tab and has good content in the issues tab. So it is in fact using GitHub to track its issues. Mm -hmm. so, so this is one where the Jenkins.io site comfortably can use GitHub to track issues Whereas the Jenkins Git plugin intentionally does not use GitHub issues because GitHub issues do not have a, a simple direct way for us to manage security issues inside GitHub issues. Mm -hmm. So we've, we've had to be more sensitive there. Mm -hmm. now, now back to your question, Vlad, how can I tell? And the answer is check the GitHub source code repository if it doesn't have an issues tab, they are certainly not using GitHub issues to track. Mm -hmm. If it does have an issues tab, it's still safe to check. Is there a, J a JIRA project where they are tracking those issues? And let's see, I'm not sure I'll, I'll bother opening JIRA for you, but it's right. the JIRA issues are, are definitely there. 
So we have components which are which issues are split between two applications. Well, we have we have I would say we have components which are in transition, mm -hmm. and components in transition typically are going from Jira towards GitHub issues. One of those components in transitions is the Jenkins.io site. We initially tracked its issues in Jira and we found it was much easier for users and much easier for contributors if we switched that site to use GitHub issues. But that means there are still some, some old issues in Jira that we are slowly closing out. Thank you, Mark. All right. Mark. Uh, at any your presentation uh, at the uh, Hack First, Hack Fest, uh, you and Oligan uh, speaking about uh, some plugins that are ready for adoption. What that means? Uh, what is adoptions to? Uh, are uh, depreciate plugins or under development ones? What is what means adoptions? Good question. Very good question. So. What does it mean to adopt a plugin or for yeah. a plugin to be up for adoption? That's an excellent question. So on the plugin site, if we look there, what we'll see is there are labels that are associated with plugins. Uh, I have to think of one that might be up for adoption. I think the Back subversion up. plugin is up for adoption. Yeah, sorry, Meg, what was that? Backup, uh, there's a bunch of backup ones. Okay, so here is, there's a, if we look at, th here's my example, this is the subversion plugin. So if you were a subversion user, you might see that you would see this, this indicator which says, hey, this plugin is up for adoption. And on the adopt a plugin site, it tells us what that means to adopt a plugin. And plugin maintainers can say, hey, I'm not planning to maintain this plugin, therefore they mark it for adoption. And other plugin maintainers may say, hey, I would like to adopt that plugin. So you follow this set of steps right here, send an email to the Jenkins developers mailing list saying, I would like to be made a maintainer. And in that in mail, you tell them which plugin you want to adopt, pull requests that show that you're credible, your GitHub user ID and your Jenkins user ID. And uh, and then you go to work on it. Now- Okay, and and what is the expectation about it? Just the uh, approval of some PRs or, or keep maintaining and in, in the future uh, offer them to adoption again? What is the, the logic behind? So the assumption is that you will you will make some positive impact. Usually the reason someone adopts a plugin is they would like to release a new version of it. And in, order, and in releasing the new version of it, they want to make some changes. Either they want to update it to use the latest Jenkins versions, or they have some feature they want, or some pull request they want. There's usually some motivation that says, I would like this, and therefore they adopt the plugin so they can do it. We hope that they would then continue maintaining the plugin but that's, that's up to them. They will be listed as the maintainer and then they get to choose, do I want to continue releasing new versions or not? Okay, and there is another tag that said uh, abandon it. Uh, what is the logic for, for transition from adoption to abandon it? It's just... So abandoned, I think abandoned. is not actually tagged. I believe Let's see if we've got it. I don't. Yeah, the subversion plugins that it said to, uh, with abandonment. Oh, did it? Okay, Version. let's look. Okay, so let's see. Okay. So when you you click on the adoption plugin, click okay. on it, the link. Ah, oh, oh, I see what you're saying. Right. Yeah. So there uh, abandoned is... plugins. Right. The okay. Second, so what? The second paragraph. Got yeah. it. It's this right here. Right. So what? The concept of an abandoned plugin is not labeled on the plugin. It's not, it's not a label you will see. It is merely an 
observation made by looking at the commit and maintenance history of the plugin. So for example, actually let's let's take a very specific example. I think we can find one that Oleg originally wrote but he no longer maintains called the remote loader plugin. Let's go look at it. And it was released there are plugins that were released last for instance last released 9 years ago. And and a plugin that was released that long ago uh, is probably abandoned. Let's see if workflow remote loader is that way. Pipeline remote loader. Here we go. So, oh no, this was last released only a year ago, so it's relatively recent. But there are other plugins that I've looked at very recently where the plugin was last released a very long time ago. And that's that's where we would apply the rules that say, oh, this is probably an abandoned plugin. And so we need to follow the abandoned plugin adoption rules. Okay. It's just for curiosity. Thank you for uh -huh. the information. Great. Any other questions? All right, then I'm going to propose that we end our session for day today. Thank you. Uh, next milestone on Google Season of Docs is July 30th, I believe, when the organization proposals will be submitted to Google. And then I believe it's two weeks after that that Google will announce who's been accepted. Thanks very much, everybody. And okay, I'll, thank you. Bye. I'll save a copy of it and it'll be posted to the list. Thanks, Terrific. all. Thanks. Thank Bye. Thanks.